asking people to write short things and there's no model whatsoever. And so the two of us, I said, great idea. Why don't you go for it? And she said, yeah, but I, I don't know all the places to look. And I didn't either, but I had a little more chutzpah, I think. So I, so we, we decided to work together, and um, and that's how, in short, came into being. So it was a, it was definitely collaborative at that point, and that's where my little, very short talk, starts. It says in 1950, 95. See, it was going to be worse than that. 1955. <laughs> <laughs> In 1995, when my co-editor and I began looking for pieces for our first anthology, we often had to ferret them out, lifting them from longer pieces or looking in obscure places. But something was in the air. Within two years, Dingy had started on the brevity venture, and this surely turned some kind of tide because writers began to realize the power of writing short and sweet. For our next anthology, we had many more pieces to choose from. And of course, by then we were stealing from Dinty. So, <laughs> you know, um, um, still, I was a bit suspicious of using the term flash nonfiction, as though it were a goal rather than a result. I tended to use short pieces in my books as a kind of punctuation between longer ones. When I think of their origins, they seem to come into being when the topic was limited, and I realized that I shouldn't act as though it was worth more than I'd already said. Or when a longer piece improved immensely if I cut out the first two pages, or the last two. Or when I realized that inside a longer piece, there was something that would do better all on its own. Or, and this is important, when I'd said all I had to say, and still it had remained stubbornly short, in other words, they were short by default, not by design.